Well, with the CDC's report and with these two high-profile suicides, I think we're becoming more aware as a country um, and, and internationally of, of this problem that there are more suicides in the United States in 2016 than there were homicides, and there are more than breast cancer deaths, and there are more than all natural disasters combined. So this is a problem that continues to grow, but really hits home when we see people that um, we, you know, feel like we can connect to. And I, I mean, I think what, as somebody who's worked in this field since 1999, I've been a researcher, I, I treat suicidal people, and I've even had suicidal thoughts myself. I think that we we think we know, but we also feel really baffled and struggle to, to explain these things. So in the case, you know, people, we, what we understand is there is no one path to suicide and that everyone gets to that end result in a very unique way. And there are some overlapping things, but the most common overlapping thing is this experience of suffering that feels intolerable, that, that it doesn't seem like the person, the person doesn't feel like they can survive the suffering. And so that in combination with something like shame of being somebody who has a mental health problem, depression or anxiety, and not wanting to have that disclosed, which may have been the case with Kate Spade, or that suffering in combination with some kind of fearlessness, like Anthony Bourdain, we heard, just his total absence of fear, that kind of combination can increase the risk that somebody will die by suicide. But then there's all, all of us have been through these things, like addiction, we've been through depression, we've been through divorce. Those are all risk factors, but the vast majority of us, we never go on to kill ourselves. But what I think is really important also that we haven't been highlighting as much is that there's about 10 million people per year in the United States, about 4%, people seriously consider suicide every year. And, you know, that's enormous. That means that those people are experiencing that and they are not acting on it, meaning you can live with suicidal thoughts. It's a problem that people are having suicidal thoughts. But there's something to be said that this is a condition that people live with and learn how to cope with and survive, and there are ways to manage, to really manage that experience. So how do you get people to seek help? We, you know, we hear from this study that uh, many of the people who had taken their own lives had not been diagnosed with uh, any mental illness. What can be done to encourage more people to seek help before it's too late? Well, I think part of it is this practical public health education. Like there are very simple things that when I talk to suicidal people, what they say is if you're a healthcare provider, if you're a friend, if you're a family member, there are three things that are most important for you to know. Whether you're my doctor, whether you're my friend, it's that you do not panic, that 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 you can be present with me in whatever it is that I'm I'm going through and sit next to me, and that you provide some piece of hope that like you know, I have seen you get through hard things before, and I and I know we can get through this, and I know it's awful right now. Those three things, like not panicking, being present, and providing some hope, those the people who've been there say that that is incredibly important. And then for the person who's in the overwhelming suicidal crisis, what the research is showing is that people don't wake up in the morning knowing they're going to kill themselves. That that's actually a significant chunk of suicides. The people decide in the minutes before, in the hours before, and what that what that points to is that we make decisions sometimes that we would never otherwise make. So when you interview suicide attempt survivors who nearly died by suicide, they say that they wish they would not have done that. Meaning that that state passes, and usually that state, that intolerable experience, like it can't survive this. It's so painful. This emotional suffering. It passes in 24, less than 24 to 48 hours. People just don't know the facts about that and that they